Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to help you analyze your own serve by showing you checkpoints you can use to improve your serve. I highly recommend you go out and film yourself from the side view and the back view so you can cross-reference what you see with what you learn in this video. Let's get right to it. The first thing you got to make sure of is that you're holding the racket properly. Now, if you are right-handed, you are going to put the base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad on panel number two for a right-hander. And if you're a lefty, you're going to put your base knuckle and heel pad on your panel number two. Now that we've got the grip, then you got to make sure your feet are correct. You can see that my back foot here is parallel or pretty close to parallel to the baseline, and my front foot is angled in. I also am not a huge fan of when players try to copy that Roger Federer position where their back foot is way back here. I think it actually makes it harder for players and amateur players to coil in their serve and then be able to uncoil because uh, it actually gives a false sense of coiling. It makes it hard for the upper body to turn more than the lower body. I'll explain here in more detail as we go, but I just want you to have your feet more in line with each other, almost like your feet are on a skateboard going toward the net. Back foot parallel to the baseline, front foot angled. Again, you can modify it to what feels best for you, but those are just kind of the rules of thumb there. So when it comes to the racket itself, I like to rest the ball under the throat of the racket. It actually helps relax my hitting arm because the weight of the racket is actually being supported by my tossing hand. And one last thing, I want you to notice on the right here how my racket is angled a few degrees open. That's a great sign that I'm using the proper grip. Players who use a forehand grip have their strings facing down, and they actually tend to bounce the ball with their racket. What I would recommend is using that continental grip that I just showed you, right, your knuckle and heel pad on panel number two, but have it so that your racket is actually slightly open. That encourages you to use the proper grip. So this is checkpoint number one, the ready position with the proper grip, the proper foot position, and resting the racket on the ball with the racket slightly open. All right, let's get to checkpoint number two. Now, this is really where we see amateur players begin making their first critical mistakes in their technique. So a couple things here, and I'm going to kind of show you how I get to checkpoint two from checkpoint one here in a few seconds, but I just want to show you what checkpoint two is. It's called palm down. You'll notice my palm is facing down my strings are facing down, I could take a ball and place it in the throat of the racket. From the side view, you can see that the tip of the racket is actually facing very much toward the camera. Rather than facing it back to the fence, I'm actually tilt, uh, having the, the tip of the racket facing to the camera. You see Djokovic do this, you see Federer do this. Federer actually brings his racket back toward the back fence, but then he starts bringing it back into this position. Osaka, Monfils, um, Sam Groth, fastest server in the world. This position where from the back view, if you're right-handed, the tip of the racket is pointing off to the right. Again, as a lefty, you're going to reverse all of this. This is your first step in correcting a palm-up waiter's tray serve. When you go palm up and your strings are facing up, it's an absolute killer for racket speed. Now, let me show you from checkpoint number one, the ready position for the serve, we could see my back. But now as I rock my weight back, and you'll see this, my weight rocks back toward the back fence, I also coil my body and I turn. When I turn my body away from the court, it's then going to allow me to turn back prior to contact again. And that's a great way then to bring that elbow forward and up. And again, I'll explain all this, but we got to coil if we want to end up uncoiling. Now, when I toss the ball, I toss the ball around the top of my head. And I want to show you from the side here, the way I toss, I use what's called a J toss. And that just means that my racket, sorry, my uh, tossing hand draws a letter J, and it's not a perfect J, but let me just circle the ball. 
And right here, actually, this is a cool view of it. Look how I cover my face. <laughs> I've never looked better. <laughs> but look, I'm covering my face because that's where the ball is. The ball is actually between me and the camera. I actually brought the ball behind my tossing shoulder, which actually then makes it very easy then to toss into the court. But let me continue here with the J toss. And you can see right, let me go one more. Perfect, right there. So you can see it looks like the letter J. So look, right? Now it's a backward J <laughs> from our vantage point, but from my vantage point as this actual server in this video, it, it is drawing the letter J as a right-hander. This is a great way of tossing the ball into the court and for coiling, right? I'm, I'm turning my body, bringing the ball back. Look at this. The ball's actually by my right pocket from the camera's view. When the ball comes back by my back pocket, it's actually going to make it very easy to toss into the court, and I want to. I want to be leaning into the court, going into the court to be able to hit my fastest serve. So this is checkpoint number two. I'm tossing the ball and my strings are facing down. Now, when I release the ball, this is when I'm going to begin bending my knees. So yes, my arms are coming up, and you'll see I've got the Federer style of arm timing, where my arms are coming up at the same time, but the tossing arm is leading. That creates the environment for racket speed because then my racket has to speed up in order to hit the ball uh, before it drops too low. But watch how, if I just draw a line at the top of my head, watch as my tossing hand and my hitting hand rise, my head drops. So look how my head is going down below that yellow line as my arms are going up. On the serve, you really want the body going the opposite direction as your arms. And that's true during the drop of the racket as well. And I'll show you that in a second. Many players don't bend their knees at all on their serve. So you want to release the ball and then begin the knee bend. Now let's get to checkpoint number three. Checkpoint number three is what I call knock off the birthday hat. Now, if you have never seen any of my videos before, then I completely understand why you have never heard that before. But if you've watched even five videos of me on Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube, you know that I'm a big fan of the birthday hat. And the reason is because if you're wearing a birthday hat, and if any of you have a connection with Roger Federer, I would love to meet him, get on the court, and have him put on a birthday hat. Trust me, Federer would knock a birthday hat off of his head every time he serves. Uh, Djokovic would do the same thing. Kyrgios, Sam Groth, Naomi Osaka, all these players, they bring their racket in and they knock off the birthday hat. Do all pros hit serves this way? No. Ash Barty doesn't move her racket the same way as Federer and Osaka. The reason, and I love Ash Barty serve, but the reason I don't teach the Ash Barty type of serve is because it's too close to the palm up serve that amateurs and only amateurs watch my videos. And players who struggle with their serves are the ones searching for videos on YouTube, looking for ways to improve. So I like using a service motion that's completely different than what you will see from an up an amateur you know club player with a palm up position, which is the Feder and Osaka and Monfils palm down position. That's what I love, right? So if you go out and put a birthday hat on your head and hit some serves, it will give you the instant feedback as to whether or not you're knocking off the birthday hat like Osaka, like Kyrgios, and like Roger Feder. So checkpoint number three is knock off the birthday hat. Now, we talked about when the body should start going down and the body should start going down, right? So I drew that yellow line and my body is going down to bend my knees as I'm releasing the ball. Well, when should I go back up? You should explode back up with your body, pressing your legs against the ground to explode up. When the racket gets to the birthday hat or like Riley Opelka, just before or uh, Dimitrov, just before the rocket hits off the birthday hat. So you can explode up at this moment or at this moment, any time from here 
to here and you will be on time. You look at Andy Roddick. He ex- starts exploding when these rackets in this point in this position. His his strings are facing down and his body starts exploding up. And and that's what allows you to get a great shoulder stretch and really let that racket drop violently and then you get a tremendous amount of racket speed. So I watch most amateur players on Instagram uh, and on TikTok who post videos and they wait till their racket's all the way down here in the drop before they start exploding their body. It's way too late and you're not maximizing the leg uh, uh, explosion and, and, and thrust. So we have to make sure that we are exploding up with the body just prior to or just as. Like Roger Feder, it starts exploding his body up just as he is uh, hitting that birthday hat off his head. Now we talked about just a few seconds ago that the arms and the body go in opposite directions. So here's a great view of this. So watch how my tossing arm will begin to drop and my racket will begin to drop, but that's at the same time my head begins to go up. So we can see this, my arms are coming up and my, look at the top of my hat. My hat is sinking down. Now watch, the opposite is gonna become true. My head is gonna start going up as my arms begin dropping. It's a cool way of understanding the relationship between the body and the arms. As the arms come up, your body goes down. As the arms then begin to drop and the racket starts to make this move down behind you, that's when the body begins exploding. And you can see my tossing arm is dropping as well. It's important that you understand not just what to do, but when to do it. So look at my tossing arm dropping, look at my racket dropping, and it coincides with when my body is exploding up. The reason for this is when you get your body going up as your racket's going down, it stretches out the shoulder deeper and farther, makes you, you know, kind of more flexible and gets that racket to go way low and, and, and swing around and get tremendous racket speed up into the ball. So it's not just important what you do, but also when you do it. Now, when you explode up, you, and this is really important, you've got to make sure that your elbow is coming up and forward. Watch my elbow follow that line. You want your elbow coming up and forward. That's the throwing motion. You, and you're going to do it with a bent arm, like your arm, your elbow is leading. Look at my elbow. Follow this line. Watch this line right here. My elbow is following that line. So my elbow is coming up and forward. Look at your elbow position. That, and, and, and analyze this. Again, you want to know what to look for. This is, I do Zoom lessons every week with players around the world. They send me videos of their technique and I compare their technique to mine or I compare their technique to the pros. I show them live on Zoom. I share my screen and I actually use this app, Coach's Eye, that I'm using to make this video right here. How else would I know how to analyze? I know what each position should look like at every phase of the service motion. And so I'm trying to teach you to be your own coach so you know exactly what to look for so you can solve your own problems, kind of like being able to change your own oil in your car. It is so important that you know what to look for in order to improve all your strokes, not just your serve. Now, because we're using a continental grip, that brings us to checkpoint number four, which is on edge. Checkpoint number four is when your edge of your racket, it looks like you're literally going to chop the ball in half. This is a supinated position where your strings, if you're right-handed, are pointing off to the left. The reason you want your racket in this position is it forces pronation in order to strike the ball. You can see my strings are facing left now, because I'm right-handed, now my strings are facing forward toward my target. So that is a 90 degree difference in my racket face. And that is the fastest way to move the racket when you are striking a serve. No different than nurses. 40 years ago, I can remember as a kid, when the nurse would have the mercury thermometer and they would snap the mercury thermometer to get the mercury down. Why would they do that? Why, how did they snap it? Right? They snapped it from a 
pronation movement. If you slam your fingers in a drawer and you go, ow, and you start hurting your hand and you start shaking your hand, that's pronation. That's the fastest way to move your hand. So when you're hitting the ball and your strings are on edge and then you turn to get your strings to face toward the back of the ball, it's incredible the amount of snap that your racket produces into the back, transferring the energy from racket to the ball. You can see on the left here, we can see straight through my strings. Normally in this position, again, the Zoom lessons I do every week, and if you'd like to sign up for a Zoom lesson with me so I can fix your technique once and for all, go to 2minutetennis.net and sign up. In, usually I see amateur players completely open, where their racket, instead of seeing through the strings, all I see is the edge of the racket, and their strings are facing up. So in this position right here, I normally see the racket not like this, with the strings facing left, but I see players with their palm and their strings facing directly up, which means you no, you no longer need to pronate. You're just going to hit flat into the back with no pronation, and you're going to lose a tremendous amount of racket speed. Now, remember at the beginning, we were coiled because we went from checkpoint one to checkpoint number two, and we saw my back to my ch in my chest. So we coiled almost like a baseball pitcher coiling away from the catcher and then we're ready to uncoil. Now here's the important thing. When you uncoil and you can see I'm I'm like a corkscrew. Not only am I going up, I'm also uncoiling. When your body goes up, you don't want to continue uncoiling as you're hitting. It's important that we are slowing down our body's rotation and that becomes a reactive break. Let me explain what this means. Notice how I am taking my left arm and I am bringing it in toward my body as I serve. So notice this. My tossing arm ends up up against my body. Why do I want this to happen? Because my body is rotating. See my chest right here? My chest is facing this way, and now my chest is facing this way. See so my body is rotating. Well, as it's rotating, I want to stop that rotation, which kind of becomes a slingshot for the racket, and the racket accelerates so much faster. So I'm actually going to bring my tossing arm in against the body, and that slows my body down. Look at Andy Roddick as he is hitting a serve. Look at Roger Federer. Look at Dominic Team. They pull the tossing. Look at Andy Murray. They bring this tossing arm in against their body and watch them in slow motion. They bring their tossing arm in against their body. What does that do? It becomes a reactive break slowing the body down. You'll see as I'm striking this ball, and this is one of the little visual cues I look for with my uh, lessons when they send me videos is I look for their tossing arm to be visible on their hitting side at contact. Usually I see the player have their tossing arm down just dangling on their left side because they're kind of trying to copy that Dominic Team left arm flare. Well, not even Dominic Team flares his arm during contact. He's tucking that arm in against the body. And unlike a figure skater or unlike a diver who brings both arms in against their body to rotate faster, it is the opposite effect on a throwing motion. When you are rotating your body and then you bring your tossing arm in, unlike the uh, figure skating where you want the body to rotate faster on a serve. We want the arm to accelerate. So the way you get the arm to accelerate is actually the way is actually to slow the body down. So tuck your tossing arm in, drop it down, but then tuck it in, drop it down, but then tuck it in against your body that actually slows down the body's rotation and helps you snap at contact, and it's amazing the amount of racket speed that you get. And it's not necessarily a wrist snap. There is wrist movement up to contact, but as you're striking the ball, it's a forearm pronation. Here is contact. You can see that my chest is still facing to the right of my target. My head is up. My strings are facing where I want the ball to go. And watch now. Oh, let me explain one thing. I forgot to mention it. Look, and this is very... Uh, similar to Arthur Ashe, 
Arthur Ashe, when he contacted, like, especially like a slice serve, his contact was to the right of his body. I want you to look how the toss, since I'm right-handed, is actually to the right of my body. You watch a lot of amateurs, they put the ball way over here, and then they want to swing fast, but then the racket's got to go back over to get the ball. Put the ball in the way of your fastest racket. And because we're unwinding with the body, because that elbow is coming forward and up, centripetal force will throw the racket off to the right. So if you're right-handed again. So let's put the ball in the way of your fastest racket. See, you can take Tiger Woods and have him close his eyes and hit. he can hit the golf ball. Because Tiger Woods doesn't hit the golf ball. He swings the club. And the ball just happens to be in the way. That's how I want you to think of it on your serve. I want you to think of it that you are putting the toss in the way of your fastest racket rather than toss the ball up and then find the ball with your racket. Put the toss in the way of your fastest racket. And your fastest racket is actually, if you're right-handed, to the right of your head. You'll notice on the left here, look how I, I actually have a very low toss. If you think about Dolgopolov or even Kyrgios now has a very low toss. 50 years ago, Roscoe Tanner, very low toss. But I want you to notice how my toss barely drops. Oh, goodness, even if at all. Let me see if this ball drops. Jeez, that ball might drop an inch or two. The reason I like to use a low toss is because it gives me very little time to swing, which, again, is creating the environment for racket speed. But then it gives me a lot of time to hit the ball because the ball is not dropping. I, the ball is staying in the window of the racket face for a very long time. So it's very easy to hit the sweet spot of the racket. Most Amateur players who struggle with their tosses toss very high, then the ball is dropping and accelerating and it's very hard to time. And they actually have a lot of time to swing, which makes you want to swing slowly. Because <laughs> if you swing too early, then the ball hasn't dropped yet. It just causes a whole host of problems. So toss lower to give yourself very little time to swing, but you'll actually have a lot of time to hit the ball. It's counterintuitive, but <laughs> you'll notice a vast improvement in your swing speed and swing accuracy and shot accuracy by having a lower toss. Now, we mentioned the pronation from this point, where my strings were facing off to the left, and now my strings are facing my target. Well, that pronation continues. And now watch my strings now face off to the right. So my strings are now facing off to the right. So here they're facing left. Again, this is for a right-hander. My strings are facing left, now my strings are facing my target, now my strings are facing off to the right. That full pronation in checkpoint number six is called pronated, where your strings are facing off to the right, again, if you're right-handed. That just means you were loose enough and you were fast enough with your racket to just keep the, the pronation continuous. You can still see my tossing arm under my right armpit. This is uh, what you'll see Roger Federer do, it looks like that's my arm I just drew, my left arm. You'll see Roger Federer kind of looks like his arm is in a sling, like he broke his arm and the doctor gave him a sling. That move, again, is to accelerate the arm. So just keep it there. There's no need to flare that arm. You look at Raonic, he doesn't flare his arm, his left arm, you know, behind him, the way you see Andy Roddick, Andy Murray, um, even Roger Federer will let that left arm relax. But people are copying the wrong thing. Tuck the arm in against the body. That's what really matters, and, and you'll do it just like Raonic. You'll see, remember, my toss was to the right of me slightly. Look how I'm jumping. I'm jumping into the court, right? See how I'm jumping into the court? Most players, they toss left, and they're jumping left, and that just gets, it gets your weight going kind of like cockeyed, and then your, your body is all you know, uh, leaning to the left. When I'm hitting the ball, I'm very upright and it helps me. That's a good thing. You see a lot of players and they're upright from their, to, from their feet to their waist, but then their upper body is like way over here because they tossed way too far to the left. You'll notice my contact is inside the baseline. That gives me a nice power line leaning into the court. Remember, I notice my toss is going into the court. I'm chasing my toss, and that allows me to lean in. And then when I'm done, my back foot kicks up. That just, remember, since I'm leaning into the serve, it gives me balance. So the back leg naturally kicks up. I have followed through. I went down on my right, and then my racket follows through onto my left side. And again, I go into the court on the serve. 
So let's just go over this in 30 seconds. I'm going <laughs> to time myself, see if I can do this in 30 seconds. You've got the continental grip. You've got checkpoint number one, which is the ready position. Racket face is slightly open and make sure your feet are correct, as I, ex- as I explained. Checkpoint number two is coil, toss the ball, and have your strings face down at this point. As the ball comes out of your hand around head level, that's when your knees begin to bend. You'll come in, knocking off the birthday hat. At this point, you're going to begin exploding up. When you explode up because of the contact, or because of the uh, continental grip, excuse me, your racket's going to come around on edge. This is where you start tucking in your tossing arm against your body. You then rotate the forearm into the back of the ball. You continue to pronate. You can see my strings are now visible again from the camera's view. Same thing on this side. And then I keep my tossing arm tucked in against my body. Back foot kicks up and I follow through on my left side. I am so excited. I was so excited to make this video. I love making videos like this. I hope it translates through my voice into the video um, because I know if you start analyzing your serve and following these seven checkpoints, there is no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. Hey, if you want me to personally fix your technique once and for all, go to 2 Minute Tennis. Dot net and sign up for a live Zoom lesson with me. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.